Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Electronic musical instruments can be a costly affair. Even a collection of Walker's or Uli's finest will tear a hole in the average synth nerd's household budget. But it goes without saying that there are hardly any limits when it comes to spending massive bucks on exquisite noisemakers. Today we are going to talk about the Roland Boutique JP08. This 2015 digital synth is based on one of these expensive legends, the Roland Jupiter 8, which goes for prices you would associate with an 80s Porsche, a comfy home in the suburbs of Detroit or an elaborately fashioned guinea pig suit of armor. However, even the JP08 takes a special place among the boutiques, as it was released as a limited edition and sold at a premium, so we can expect the full feature set of the original. Or can can we? At the first glance, the JP08 is ticking a lot of dimly lit 10mm boxes. A shrink rate version of the original design without the performance section, microscopic faders, diminutive knobs, and regular sized trademark boutique touch strips for pitch bend, modulation, and adjusting settings in various modes. It's my first encounter with a K25M keyboard and even though my standards for keypads are quite low, I found it to be a major PITA to play. Most of the Jupiter 8's features made it onto the JP08. A modified oscillator section with a few added twists, the envelopes, and LFO that helped define the standard we know today. A slightly frustrating to tweak modern take on the classic 12 and 24 dB filter with a high pass to make sounds sit right in the mix. And hell yeah, PWM. Many of the classic sounds the OG Jupiter is known for ask for liberate use of cross modulation and sync. There is an arcane layer of functionality hidden in a labyrinth of shortcuts. While mono and unison mode are quite obvious, essential functions of the synthesizer like portamento or parameters of the built-in delay are reserved for the initiated. Operation of the 16-step sequencer is even more cryptic, but it comes with unexpected features like swing and various step order choices. Let's have a quick look at which corners had to be cut to fit so much classic 80s synth power into such a little box. While the JP08 still allows for layers of two sounds in dual mode, There is no split functionality, the legendary arpeggiator is missing and, yes, this is where it gets kinda ridiculous, only four voices of polyphony. You can polychain several JP08s for higher polyphony counts though. Please leave a comment if you found a way to change note priority. Still, there seems to be quite a bit of Jupiter DNA in the JP. Heavy basses, thriller style chords, beautiful strings, smooth leads, and all kinds of vintage space battle noises. I've never had the privilege of using an OG Jupiter, but the one and only Nick Bett 
did an interesting comparison of the two. Getting the firmware of the JP08 up to date is highly recommended, as it teaches the synth to respond to MIDI CC and lets you activate the secret chorus. The synth is a classic boutique, so we have to deal with the good, the bad and the ugly. Thanks again to my dear friend Matthias Jakisic for yet another synth from his collection. He recently collaborated with Paul Haslinger on the soundtrack of The Other Me, produced by no other than David Lynch. The JP08 is no longer available new and can be found on the used market for prices between 500 and 800 whatever bucks. The original Jupiter 8 is a huge, genre-defining 80s flagship. Does it even make sense to squeeze this vintage juggernaut into the boutique format? You have already heard the JP08 in today's intro tune. That turned out to be more epic than I expected. Let's see if it is capable of more delicate sounds too. What's going on, but something's going on in this thing. The JP08 adds a hard to describe little extra, even to this run of the mill poly sound. I don't know if this is authentic, but I like it. Working with the short faders is not exactly fun. I want to know how tweakable the synth is when using a MIDI controller and the internal sequencer. <laughs> As soon as you have a basic patch dialed in, you can more or less tweak whatever you want. It's a shame that the chorus can only be activated using MIDI, as it sounds really good. Jupiter sounds feel at home in many genres, both old and new. I wanna know if the JP08 can deliver the same versatility in this pulsating progressive house track going through a difficult down-tempo synthwave phase. <laughs> Jupiter is a cultural artifact of Indiana Jones MacGuffin-like proportions. It's rare, surrounded by an aura of mystery, and many of us wouldn't even be able to afford the space it takes up in the studio. Regardless of how close an emulation might be sonically, chances are it will leave a lot of people disappointed. That's not the fault of the JP08 in particular, but its ridiculously small controls, the limited polyphony, the omission of essential features and the controversial design choices of the boutique range in general certainly don't help in that respect. Sure, it sounds pretty good, but at least for my workflow the UI and connectivity of the JP08 don't really offer an advantage over a plugin. It can be assumed that this is not necessarily a criterion for many people longing for a JP08. Boutiques have become the Pokemon of the synth world, and you gotta catch them all. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.
Thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel and welcome to the monthly Vocoda shoutouts. Tier 4. We haven't heard much of the Vocoda and vocal processing programs of the Roland EF303 in last week's episode. Time to see how deep the rabbit hole goes. Tier 5. The ring modulator of the SP202 works pretty well on vocals. Let's combine it with one of the EF303's FX programs. Christina Iani asked me to push the EF303 to the limits. I've read an interesting comment about how the phono input is used with line signals in the Japanese noise music scene. Again, thank you so much for supporting the channel. See you next month.